fill his black heart. And finally, the Reverend Green. In the heat of the moment, was he damned to hell? Well, one of them's missing a halo, but to help us find the killer, four celebrity sleuths tonight, here to put high pressure on the suspects, weather forecaster Sean Lloyd. And somebody very well schooled in the world of mere pathological intrigue and backstabbing, Sir David Steele, MP. And their rival detectives this evening, no children's games, for TV presenter Andy Crane. And we expect some down-to-earth wisdom from Coronation Street's Beverly Callow. A good detective is uh, never afraid to follow up a hunch. So, Sean and Sir David, I want your instinctive feelings about this killing. Who do you think did it? Well, we think it's Reverend Green, oh. with a scarf of all things, in the kitchen. You must be out of your mind! What a forecast indeed! I mean, <laughs> all right, we'll just hold far for the moment. What was your instinctive reaction in this very early stage, Andy and Beverly? We won't hold you to it, I promise. We think it was Mrs. Peacock. In the study, with the sword. Yeah. With the sword? Mm -hmm. yes, it's true. a very heavy sword, I have to tell you that. But that's your immediate deduction, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. All right, the next bit's your decision at home. If you want to try your hand against the sleuths here, I think you've got a good chance, prepare to turn away. But uh, if you fancy spending the next 20 minutes smirking as they blunder up blind alleys, here is how Jake Swithin met his maker. You can look again, because we're going to start the cross-examination. The killer, naturally, is certain to lie. The innocent will always be truthful. So, Sean, Sir David, who would you like to question first? I'd like to ask Colonel Mustard a question. Now, you say you've mercenaries fighting aboard. Where exactly, and what sort of debts have they actually saddled you with? Uh, well, the first part of the question is irrelevant. And uh, as for the second part, I'd say that the debts I was saddled with would, uh, would be amply covered by the treasure that Jake Swithin unearthed. That's a pretty uh, damning reply. You seem to be indicting yourself. I'm a pretty yourself. damning sort of chap. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. All right. Just make of that what you will. Um, Andy and Beverly, question from you. Yeah, wait, Professor Plum, please. Um, who's your tailor? No, seriously. <laughs> Would you really have killed yourself if Mrs. Peacock hadn't stopped you? Are you a death before dishonour sort of chap? Um, well, I, 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 I certainly, I, I feel things very strongly. And uh, she was saying that there was a better way, of course. And um, because she didn't want the blood on the carpet in the, in the billiard room, basically. <laughs> so she was suggesting there was a, a gas oven uh, elsewhere in the house. I see. So she was suggesting suicide, not a murder. All right. Sean and David. Well, I want to ask uh, Miss Scarlett. When you were uh, doing that lewd and libidinous thing with a scarf and Colonel Mustard, were you practicing for something later? Well, the scarf is, is sort of a private message that um, Colonel Mustard and I have. Um, I leave the scarf with him when I want him to come upstairs to my bedroom. Oh. Oh. Look that way. No. Okay, let's go back to uh, Andy, Beverly. Um, uh, the Reverend Green, if I may. Now, we saw you in the film having a, a wee drink of, uh, was it champagne, sir? Oh, champagne, that's yeah. right. Are, yes. you, are you fond of a, of a drop of the hard stuff? That isn't the hard stuff, that is uh, softer, that is champagne. But are you, are you fond of, of alcohol? What's the point of the question? Well, I was you? wondering w whether it would affect your temperament, whether you get particularly bad-tempered if you've had too much to drink. No, I, if something upsets me, and I was deeply upset by this man, Jake, the, his attitude and, and the church re requiring funds. And as you saw, Colonel Mustard offered me a drink and I calmed down it, fairly rapidly. It's certainly true that he did calm down. He actually calmed down when he'd have that little sip of wine. Okay, Sean and David. This is White. I'm intrigued about your husband's death. You said your husband is dead, isn't he? Yes, he is. I'm a How, widow. Uh, I'm sorry about that, but how did he die? Well, I don't remember now, but I know he's dead. Um, yeah. Hold on a minute. Um, I do remember now. It was very sad. Uh, the poor love passed away after a very short illness. It was, it was most unexpected. Uh, the doctor said it was something he ate. All right. Thank you very much. We've got one more question now to ask suspects. Uh, it's Beverly. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Peacock. Do you believe that Jake would have gone to such lengths as to ruin your family reputation? 
I was very fond of Jake. He worked very hard. But he was a little dangerous, but quite sweet. I thought he was quite attractive until I discovered that he'd been seeing my stepdaughter. Well, you've all stood up very well to cross-examination. Uh, one of you rather too well. We don't know which one yet. So it's time for some deductions. So, Sean and David, let's hear who did it, where and what with. We are sticking with our assertion that it was the Reverend Mr. Green. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we think that his addiction to the drink was d did it, and it was with a champagne bottle in the billiard room. Uh, yes. Okay, hold it there. Andy and Beverly, your deductions, please. So we still can frame for a second, but... Uh... Yes, we're sticking with Mrs. Peacock. Oh, yes. Mrs. Yes. Peacock. We're convinced it was her. Mm -hmm. And we still think she was strong enough to use the sword, uh -huh. but now in the billiard room. Oh, how silly. Oh, how silly. Okay, let's just go through that. Sean and David are saying it was in the billiard room, the weapon was the champagne bottle, and you're sticking with the Reverend Green. One out of three of those deductions is right. You've got one out of three. And in Beverly are saying the billiard room as well. They're going for the sword and they suspect Mrs. Peacock. One out of three. One out of three. All right, join us again after the break as the tension rises when we'll be uh, taking stock of development so far and we'll cast our eyes over some extremely important new evidence that's just arrived. We're back in a couple of minutes. Thank you, and welcome back to Arlington Grange, where we're trying to solve the murder of local handyman, Jake Swithin. Now, we haven't got very far. The killer certainly covered their tracks extremely well. Just about all we've discovered is that the dead man wasn't the only one carrying on with Miss Scarlet. Colonel Mustard had had his moments as well. <laughs> very soon, the net will begin to close on the killer, but first, some new evidence which has just come to light. All you ever said is true, Reverend. There is evil in the world. An evil in the hearts of men, and in the hearts of women, too. Come now, Mrs. White. Take heart. That is our purpose on earth, to drive out evil. Fight the good fight. What was this? He's a rightfully mine, and I shan't be robbed. When I find the one that's done this. Revealing or not? Well, it's back to the cross-examination now. All the suspects are open to questioning. The detectives have to follow each answer with an accusation. So, Andy and Beverly, go for your kill. Uh, we'd just like to ask Colonel Mustard. Did he know that Jake was having an affair with Miss Scarlet? No, I was totally unaware of that. You didn't know that until tonight? No, I didn't. How do you feel about it? Pretty cheesed off. <laughs> All right, thank you. Let's have the deduction, please. <laughs> well, then, Mrs. Peacock uh, nobbled Jake with the champagne bottle in the drawing room. <laughs> That's very interesting. You reckon it's the drawing room, uh -huh. it was the champagne bottle, and you're sticking with Mrs. Peacock. Yep. None out of three. None oh, out of three. You are helpful. completely wrong. None of those three. Mrs. Right. Peacock, you are completely in the clear. I'm Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to give you good news. Can I just then apologise? I'm ter terribly sorry. I've been accusing you all evening of a, a heinous crime and I'm very sorry. You may apologise. Do come and see me later. <laughs> That's oh, very kind. <laughs> I'll make it up to you, I promise. Never too late to say sorry then. All right. Sean, Sir David, a question. Yes. <laughs> Go on. Mrs. Mrs. White, um, when you said after you found the body, I'm so sorry. Was that a confession? No, it wasn't a confession. I, it, I just meant I really was sorry because I'm going to miss him. I, I, I've taken uh, a lot of interest in Jake ever since he was a little boy. Sounds, sounds pretty good to me. What would you deduce from that? Shall we go for it? Go on. <laughs> we think it's Reverend Green with a steak hammer in mm -hmm. the billiard room. In the billiard room? Oh, you How often <laughs> can the finger of suspicion point at an innocent man? <laughs> Let's go through it again. The billiard room, the steak hammer, and the Reverend Green. One out of three right. One out of three right. So you're getting back on track again. 